one person who is going to stay with you throughout your PhD journey. That one person who is an absolutely integral part of your PhD is a research supervisor or as we also know, a research guide. A research supervisor or a guide is an absolutely essential part of your PhD journey without whose guidance, whose support you cannot complete this journey. And this is not only true for students in India, it is a fact for research scholars across the world. Another important fact for research scholars are that once you complete your PhD journey, the next milestone that you all look forward to is being a research supervisor yourself. So this video is dedicated to all the current and future supervisors. This video has been divided into five sections. In section one, we are going to talk about what is the eligibility of being a supervisor in India. Then we are going to talk about what is the difference between a supervisor and a co-supervisor and who can be a co-supervisor. We will also talk about in this video, what is the maximum age, till what age can you continue being a supervisor. Of course, how many students can you guide, supervise at one particular time would be covered in the fourth section. And lastly, we are going to talk about what are the major obligations of a research supervisor. This is Dr. Ritika Gaba, your PhD coach, mentor and guide. And if you want to know all about supervisors, then you continue watching this video. And if you still haven't subscribed to our channel, liked our videos, then please do so. Also share them with your friends and your colleagues. So let us start today's video. Let us start by discussing the eligibility requirements of a supervisor. In other words, who can be a research supervisor? The most important requirement to be a research supervisor as per the UGC regulations of 2016 and also of 2022 are that a research supervisor should be a full-time regular faculty of a university of a college or an institute of national importance. Up after this, UGC has given further eligibility requirements based on each faculty's designation. So a professor or an associate professor should have a minimum of five research papers published in refereed or peer-reviewed journals. An assistant professor should have at least five years of experience with a PhD and should also have three research papers published in a peer-reviewed or refereed journal. Remember, you can, the research supervisor have to be from the same university from where a student is pursuing their PhD degree. That means that if a student is pursuing their PhD from a university X, then the research supervisor also has has to be the full-time professor, associate professor or assistant professor from the same university X. This is about who can be a supervisor. In the next section, we are going to discuss that till what age can a faculty continue to be a research supervisor. So as long as a faculty is fulfilling the eligibility requirements as given by UGC and as specified by the university. Remember that the eligibility criteria that we've discussed in the previous section are just minimum eligibility criteria and the universities, if they so desire, they can definitely make their research supervisor norms, eligibility norms more stricter, more stringent. So if you're fulfilling the norms, then throughout your uh, tenure of a professor and associate professor as a faculty, you can continue to guide students. However, the good news is that even after retirement, even after superannuation, you are allowed to guide students. How? 
if in case after super animation your parent university is giving you an honorary professor position or is giving you a emeritus professor position or is bringing you back on contract then also you can continue to supervise students up till the age of 70 years of age of course the university where you are working has to ensure that you have sufficient research experience in that area you are physically fit and also there should not be any financial compensation given to any research supervisor let us come to the third part of this video where we are going to discuss about co-supervisors sometimes when students pursue a PhD in an interdisciplinary area or when they are working in a, on a research topic that requires some specialized knowledge, some skill, some technical skill, then in such situation, in order to ensure that the student has proper guidance, then along with the research supervisor, research advisory committee also appoints a co-supervisor. Now, from where can you get this co-supervisor? So that co-supervisor can be from the other department, can be from another university or can be an adjunct faculty. Yes, adjunct faculties can also be supervisors, but they can only be co-supervisor. Adjunct faculty of a university cannot, please note, adjunct faculties cannot act as research supervisors but they can act as co-supervisors so this co-supervisor you can say is uh, uh, additional help which the students get because they are pursuing a phd which requires some additional technical knowledge some additional knowledge which they feel would be compensated by having a co-supervisor so this co-supervisor and research supervisors skills should complement each other and they should not overlap with each other so yes there are times when the students if they know any faculty they can definitely propose that faculty's name in front of their supervisor suggest that faculty's name as a co-supervisor but whether or not that person is appointed as your co-supervisor the, that decision lies on the research advisory committee. Let us come to the fourth section where we are going to discuss how many scholars can a research supervisor guide at a, a given point of time. So we have made this section taking in view of the 2022 regulations which are going to be implemented very soon. In case you do not know what these 2022 regulations are, then you can watch our previous videos on it and also the 2016 regulation. So since MPhil has been discontinued in the 2022 regulation, they have not mentioned anything about the number of MPhil scholars that you can pursue. But in the 2016 regulation, they have mentioned. So in case any one of you is has an MPhil old scholar, then you can definitely continue guiding them. But you cannot undertake any new MPhil scholars from the academic year 2022-2023 onwards. Okay, so now let us come to the number of scholars that you can guide. So a research supervisor who is a professor can guide, as per the 2022 regulation, a maximum of eight PhD scholars which includes a co-supervisory role and a supervisory role. So in total, as a co-supervisor and a supervisor, you can guide, a professor can guide a maximum of eight scholars. And in case of MPhil scholars, you can guide a maximum of three MPhil scholars as given in the 2016 regulation. So in total, a professor can guide 11 scholars. Moving on to an associate professor. So an associate professor can guide a maximum of six scholars in co-supervisory and supervisory role combined and two MPhil scholars. Moving on to an assistant professor, an assistant professor can guide a maximum of four PhD scholars and one MPhil scholar. So in total, five scholars, 
both as a co-supervisor and as a supervisor. So from here we move on to some of the exceptions in case where you can guide more than the given number maximum given number of students. So in case faculties are have taken up some international students where you're guiding some international students as a research supervisor in that case you can guide in addition two more scholars. So two addition to the total number of scholars. So if you can guide a maximum of eight scholars as a professor, if you have international students as well, then you can guide two more scholars. Besides this, in case any of the faculty are working on any research project, which, are, which has a significant grant and which requires uh, one scholar extra, then you can, with the permission of research advisory committee, take on one additional scholar for that particular research project. Whatever additions, subtractions that you make in your research scholar list, all have to be approved by the research advisory committee or the research committee of your university. With this, we come to the last part, but definitely not the least part of this video. In this section, we are going to discuss what are the supervisor's obligation. So in the 2022 regulation, a special section for the first time has been added, which lists down what are the obligations of a supervisor. That is why I said this is last, but definitely not the least. So as per the 2022 regulation, a supervisor has to regularly on a weekly basis actually conduct meeting with their research scholars in which they are going to review their work and give them feedbacks. It is also important that a research supervisor at the very beginning of the research discusses with the, the scholars what are the expectations that their scholars have from the supervisor and their supervisor has from the scholars. They decide in the very beginning that what kind of guidance, what kind of supervision is the supervisor going to give. If in case there is a co-supervisor, then what would be his responsibilities, his role also has to be discussed and all this discussion has to be, be made a part of the research plan. Besides this, of course, the supervisor has to guide the scholar in terms of academic writing of the thesis and various chapters and parts of the thesis. But they will also guide them regarding research papers, regarding the conference that they should attend, the coursework subject that they should take up in case of leave of absence, where they can take a leave of absence, why they can take what kind of exchange student exchange program they can go to if you do not know what is this leave of absence then we've mentioned this in the above video you can have a look about leave of absence okay uh, not only this research guide also has to give career guidance and instill teaching skills in the research scholar i hope with this, you know everything about a research supervisor. In case you still have any doubts, then you can always put them in the comment section below. We would love to answer them. This is Dr. Ritika Gaba, your PhD coach, mentor and guide from Zenith PhD Training and Consultancy. And thank you so much for watching my video.